Hundreds of public sector workers in Uruguay have mobilised against the privatisations and budget cuts announced by the government. Japanese health authorities reported a new daily record of over 1,000 COVID-19 cases this Wednesday. Kenyan health authorities reported that 634 health professionals have tested positive for COVID-19 since the beginning of the outbreak in the country. From the headquarters of Telisa English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the South, I'm Katrina Goss. Hundreds of public sector workers in Uruguay continue to mobilise against the privatisations and budget cuts announced by the government. Public sector unions, the Uruguay Banking Association and the Labour Union Council march from the Ministry of Economy and Finance to the national government headquarters, demanding that the Luis Lacobo government stop the dismantling of the public sector following the announced budget cuts. The protesters also rejected the package of government measures approved by the Legislative Chamber through an urgent consideration law at the beginning of this month. They've also denounced the elimination of two-thirds of the vacancies open to retired workers, equivalent to at least 900 jobs. Bolivia's de facto authorities continue their persecution of the movement towards socialism party, with the Minister of the Presidency filing a criminal complaint against former President Evo Morales and other leaders for promoting marches in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. The de facto minister, Yerko Nunez, accused Morales, the leader of the Bolivian Workers' Center, Juan Carlos Huarachi, and leader of the movement towards socialism party, Betty Beatriz Yaniques Lozana, of endangering public health, public incitement to commit crimes, criminal association, and destruction or damage to state property. The move comes following the widespread national demonstrations held this Tuesday to denounce the postponement of the general elections once again and represents yet another manoeuvre by the de facto authorities to repress workers, popular and social organisations and maintain their grip on power. Argentinian President Alberto Fernandez this Wednesday presented his government's judicial reform bill. The bill proposes the reorganization of federal courts, the establishment of an adversarial system and the formation of an advisory council. The reform has as its main objective the improvement of the federal justice system by merging the 12 criminal courts with the 11 financial crime courts, doubling their number to boost this judicial area which deals with complex crimes such as narco-trafficking, human trafficking and corruption. The announcement and the general guidelines of the bill were introduced in the presidential office by Fernandes, together with Minister of Justice Marcela Losada. Many times I've raised my concerns about how the federal justice system acted in recent years. I said then that the judiciary should work for all Argentines, that the law should be applied equally, no matter who is in power. The only thing that drove me to call for change was to strengthen the rule of law. I simply seek to build a republic that all demand, but some flee. Peru has now reported over 395,000 coronavirus cases and more than 18,000 deaths, making it the second hardest hit nation in South America. While over 200,000 patients have recovered, almost 100,000 cases remain active. I have been in the hospital for almost 25 days. I'm 37 years old and I practically feel like I've been born again after being intubated for 11 days. I'm already receiving respiratory therapy. I will be discharged in these days. I had pain because of the tube in my mouth. It made me feel like I couldn't properly breathe. I felt like something was in my throat. I even took it out of myself. I pulled it out together with a nostril tube. So doctor hide me tight my hands. And long lines of Peruvians have been seen in the capital Lima as they queue to refill empty oxygen cylinders for their loved ones battling against COVID-19. A mobile unit run by the army is providing the oxygen refills as residents stress that the prices the government has set are too high while complaining that they only sell three-metre tanks. 
Porque sinceramente lo oxígeno está bien escaso. Honestly, oxygen is very scarce. I swear, we went all over Lima yesterday to get oxygen for a couple of patients. I am supporting some friends, and it is hard to see people crying and claiming and begging for oxygen. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro this Wednesday explained the most recent measures his government is adopting in order to ensure food production continues in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. President Maduro announced a relaunch of the Agro-Venezuela Mission for National Food Production to be financed by the Petro Cryptocurrency. He explained that the initiative emerged during a meeting of the state re representatives of the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our America as a strategy to reactivate the economy post-COVID-19 and face the unilateral blockade imposed by the United States against Venezuela. Between the novel coronavirus and the production, I would say between the fight against the coronavirus and the pandemic and production, there should be no contradictions. We can do it. We can definitely do it, guaranteeing everything, assuring everything. Talica Volcano, one of the most active in Nicaragua, spewed smoke and ashes up to 60 meters into the sky this Wednesday, sparking fears among locals that the toxic gas might affect their crops. The volcano in northwest Nicaragua is a popular destination for tourists and hikers. Ten gas and ash explosions were reported, according to the National System for Disaster Prevention, Mitigation and Response, although without causing damage to nearby communities. <laughs> Ashes are coming out right now, and when those ashes fall on the crops, they ruin them, burn them off and affect lower areas. Because when the air is falling, like right now, there you can see that ashes are falling. It started at 5.30 a.m. and went on from there, because I came here in the morning at about 6 a.m., and there were really big fires. The Cuban government has announced that the annual vote in the United Nations General Assembly on the resolution demanding the lifting of the U.S. blockade against Cuba will be postponed until next year due to the coronavirus pandemic. We insist that while the economic, financial and commercial blockade of Cuba that is far from being lifted and which the international community calls for, which has worsened even during this pandemic, Cuba will not stop denouncing this policy in all the venues possible. I think they, the U.S. government, should lift it. It hurts in all aspects and shameful, but it's not in our hands. It's up to something above us, whether they will lift it or not lift it. And we'll be right back after this short break, so stay where you are. The governor of the U.S. state of Oregon, Kate Brown, announced on Twitter that federal forces deployed in Portland will start pulling out of the city on Thursday. The governor stated that after discussions with Vice President Mike Pence and other officials, the federal government agreed to withdraw its forces from Portland, which has seen ongoing protests against police brutality and systemic racism. Brown stressed that federal forces had acted as an occupying force and brought violence to the city. Japanese health authorities reported a new daily record of COVID-19 cases this Wednesday, topping 1,000 for the first time since the pandemic began. The new cases were mainly located in the cities of Tokyo, Osaka and Fukuoka. Japan's total COVID-19 figures now stand at almost 32,000 cases and over 1,000 fatalities. The chief cabinet secretary said some areas of the country are facing a shortage of accommodation, such as hotels, to house and treat patients with mild symptoms of COVID-19. He also blamed the recent surges on clusters of infections due to groups of people not maintaining social distancing. Meanwhile, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe announced the resumption of tourism activities across the country, excluding the capital. Two hundred and fifty migrants rescued off the coast of Libya by the Italian Coast Guard boarded a tourist ferry from the island of Lampedusa to Sicily this Wednesday. Italian authorities reported that there was no intervention by other governments in the rescue operation, despite the migrants being spotted by a plane in the Libyan search and rescue region. The Libyan Coast Guard claimed that the rescue operation was not possible to conduct due to a lack of naval resources. Meanwhile, the Lampedusa Immigrant Reception Centre continues to receive large groups of migrants arriving on a daily basis, despite overcrowding reported by authorities.
Demonstrations were seen in Bulgaria's capital, Sofia, on Wednesday to demand that Prime Minister Boyko Borisov and Chief Prosecutor Ivan Jeshev resign following corruption allegations. We came to protest for a federal state. For me, the main thing is the feeling of justice. What is happening, corruption, which leads to polarization in society, few rich and many poor people, which is hugely disproportionate for Bulgaria. We want everything to change. There is nothing good left in this country. There is nothing good left in every sphere. First, we hope the government will move away so that more capable, competent people can come to run. There are too many compromising materials that bombard us daily. I believe that government must be more ethical, hygienic and adequate. Egypt may reimpose the strict preventative measures it had earlier imposed to fight the coronavirus. According to Egyptian Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli, the country has moved towards a gradual reopening of its economy since June, lifting some of the restrictions as part of a plan to coexist with the virus. The PM urged our Egyptians to continue to adhere to all precautions, including maintaining social distance and wearing face masks in crowded places to help the country to keep the daily infection rate low and prevent a possible resurgence of the virus. Egypt has reported almost 93,000 COVID-19 cases, including over 4,000 fatalities. The Palestinian Authority once again denounced Israel's crimes against the Palestinian people before the United Nations this Wednesday and called on the International Criminal Court to investigate the Israeli regime. During a virtual meeting of the UN Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People, Ambassador to the UN, Riyad Mansour, stressed that the crimes against the Palestinian people in the occupied territories, including Jerusalem, must be investigated and those responsible held accountable. The Ambassador also denounced Israel's expansionist plans, which prevent a solution to the conflict and put the peace of the entire region at risk. An Israeli artist has mocked Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in a reenactment of the Last Supper installed in central Tel Aviv a day after protesters were beaten and bloodied by security forces. Artist Itai Salat said the piece in Tel Aviv's Rabin Square represents the last meal of Israeli democracy. Protests have intensified against Netanyahu over his handling of the coronavirus pandemic and the devastating economic crisis it has caused. The Prime Minister has been accused of leading a chaotic virus containment strategy as cases have surged and economically painful initial restrictions have been reimposed. This last meal can represent the last meal of the exalted man, the man who died in his heart when the state of Israel beat a million unemployed people hungry for bread. And we have more news coming up after this final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Kenyan health authorities offered an update on COVID-19 cases this Wednesday. We tested some 5,259 uh, persons, uh, therefore uh, bringing a cumulative um, a figure of 289,759. Now out of those uh, 525, uh, 5,259, some 544, 544 persons turned positive, and out of them, 340 are male and 204 uh, are female. And Kenyan health authorities also noted that 634 health professionals have tested positive for COVID-19 since the beginning of the outbreak in the country, while noting that the healthcare system has sufficient personal protective equipment for all employees. You know, as we speak today, some 634 health workers, health professionals have actually turned positive across the country. It's about 3%, it's about 3% of the cases reported, which is very low because globally, uh, healthcare workers work, uh, uh, represent about 10% of the reported cases. I can confirm here and now that we have sufficient PPEs in this country. If there is a problem, it's a, it's a problem of management, problem of distribution, but most certainly 
not a problem of availability. The Malian opposition June 5th movement has rejected the proposal to form a new unity government while insisting that Malian President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita and Prime Minister Bubu Sisi resign, thus dashing hopes of a solution to the political crisis. From this moment on, we reset the counters to zero. Resignation of Ibrahim Boubacar Keita and his regime. And this counter, it will be continued to run, and we said that the truce that was announced by the M5 RFP will end in a few days. 48 days after the Tabaski festival, we will make an announcement here. The funeral service of anti-apartheid activist Andrew McLeany, the last surviving co-defendant convicted with Nelson Mandela in 1964, took place in South Africa this Wednesday. He served his movement and his country loyally for over seven decades. The struggle for freedom and democracy was his life. And the freedom that we enjoy today is his legacy to us. He belonged to an era of tireless struggle of sacrifice and service, of honor and integrity. It was an era of leaders who embodied the best in humanity. In Yemen, forces backed by Saudi Arabia and separatists sponsored by the United Arab Emirates have reached an agreement to form a joint government in the south of the country within 30 days. What we hope for is that this agreement will be good for the people, whether through services, salaries or living standards, from prices or high prices. If this agreement brings a truce between opposition sides, then we will bless it lawfully. We congratulate the people of the South on the Hijad agreement. God willing, it will be a good agreement for the Southern people in general, in order to improve the conditions that these proud people went through. We also congratulate the Secretary General Ahmed Lamles on his appointment as Governor of Aden. Residents in Afghanistan's capital Kabul have welcomed the three-day ceasefire proposed by the Taliban in order to celebrate the Islamic festival of Eid al-Hadhar while expressing hopes for lasting peace. The three days of ceasefire that have been declared by the Taliban is not enough. We want peace forever. We have the right to live in peace like other countries. We want our country to develop. We are old, old and young, tired of this war. If there is no war and instead we have peace, that will be great. If we have peace, our security forces will also be in peace. I hope we have a very peaceful aid in the days ahead. If there is no explosion and there is joy in these three days of aid, it makes us and also makes God happy. When there is no peace, we are always scared of explosions or getting shot somewhere. And we've come to the end of this news brief, but we finish with a song by Nigerian singer-songwriter Oristi Femi calling on people to stay at home in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. Remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website and social media. For Teleso English, I'm Katrina Goss. Thank you for watching and enjoy the music. This life, it's full of many things. Some 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 so many things I didn't see, now it make me they sing. Me, I don't lost memory, oh, I know fit to they think. Oh, this thing where they apple for this world is too big for me. Check out this thing where they apple, they make everybody they sound my way. Many things, many things that they make everybody this I wale. Oh no, the no, the moon is only a one for the man of my love. It no matter you day you go here or you day live inside a gege. Obe, that's the obe. This one I obe. I'm on in all day with face. You know say this life now I win. Make the obe. You know get us in one play. We got to obe. There must be this one I want way. Mama, you know they look face. You know they look age. Try to obey. 
safe to confess Why you did less This one not for your own interest I know the song got planned and they're waiting for this time to fit. Why some people got no food to eat, some are dying, why some struggle to survive it? Why some things say this whole thing is not for me? Why them they know they're their person? Some of that music can be shed down when they go some of you before you learn lesson. This one a day a day, make a game a day. Listen when they have put them make everybody this summer quick. 